Hello friends, my greetings to everyone. I am Seema and I welcome you all on this segment of Discuss Agile webinar series. Topic of today's session is Agile for India market. Where does it stand? Awareness level and maturity level of customers in embracing Agile. We have Sridharan as a guest speaker who is going to present this webinar session. Sridharan is associated with ThoughtWorks as a delivery principal and friends during the webinar session you can post your queries in the question box. Over to you Sridharan. Thank you. Thanks Seema for the introduction. Probably I'll talk a little more about myself and uh, uh, so that yeah, I mean you can relate to the context that, that I'll talk about during the start of the presentation. It's a very brief presentation but please uh, do feel free to ask me any questions or any perspective because I'm going to talk more from my experience rather than the theoretical aspects of it or whatever the uh, Gartner reports and, and so on. Cover. So you can ask me questions and then if I have gone through a similar experience then I'll be able to gladly answer you. Okay, so uh, as uh, Seema said, uh, I am uh, playing a role of a client principal as well as a delivery guy. Uh, I used to be a delivery guy but right now uh, spending more of my time uh, with the customers trying to sell, trying to uh, sustain the relationship, grow the relationship in, in various segments with, within the client relationship role. Uh, uh, like Seema said, I am with ThoughtWorks. Uh, I think most of you would know what uh, ThoughtWorks uh, is focused on what it is all about and uh, right now I am focused more on the India market and, and that sort of qualifies me uh, to deliver this that is what, what I believe. So with that introduction let me quickly move on. I, I don't know how, how do I uh, do this polling but uh, I, I assume that uh, some of you or most of you have some context in the Indian market or work with some Indian customers. I'm, I'm taking that that as a, a basic premise or an assumption. Uh, so if you haven't worked with any of the Indian customers or, or uh, be in a project where it was completely uh, done for an Indian customer, let's see if at the end of the session you get a fair idea of uh, what it means to be in, in the Indian market uh, or you can ask me questions uh, towards the end of the session or, or something is not clear to you just just stop me there and ask me questions. So to me some of these aspects uh, are usually a myth and, and I'm trying to uh, do sort of a myth buster in terms of uh, what is being perceived or a, a typical uh, notion about working with Indian customers and which uh, may not be true. One immediate thing that comes to people's mind, especially in the Indian IT companies, uh, I won't be able to make too much profit. Uh, they don't usually uh, open their purse strings. Uh, they are very uh, tight on okay, their spending, so on and so forth. Uh, while some of that may be uh, true, uh, it, it's not that Indian customers, first of all, uh, they, they have money. Right, I mean, uh, of course, like we, we have the Ambani's and, and then we have the uh, Tata's of the world uh, who are one of those largest, richest uh, people in the world. So, and they are also spending a lot of time, a uh, lot of money and, and effort in uh, coming up with the digital solutions, IT solutions for their own organizations and they are helping other organizations also. So, uh, India has money. Uh, what is true about this myth to an extent is uh, it, it doesn't come that easy uh, probably compared to how a western company would otherwise be spending because they have done this exercise over uh, decades and, and then they know where do I uh, spend my energy in terms of optimizing my capex or opex versus uh, Indian customer or an Indian market segment which is fairly new compared to the western market. So. Uh, typically you will be asked uh, what is the return on investment that I get for every penny that, that I am spending on this particular initiative so on and so forth. Uh, so partly this myth is true but uh, largely uh, if you show them the right value, if you show them uh, the, the right uh, business benefit that, that you, uh, the project or, or the 
product that you are going to uh, you are going to build is going to give then then you will definitely uh, go a long way in terms of uh, continuing a relationship or making good profit even with the indian customers also so the second one uh, again th this is also a common myth uh, the indian business people are are the indian uh, uh, cxos are not that tech savvy that's another myth uh, but some of the ctos or cxos are are the directors president at least that i had worked with they are extremely tech savvy and and they want to probably do what is the latest in the market uh, right i mean it, it, it's not that i i want to do only the proven old java stack or or a microsoft are open to uh, trying out new things uh, what is the latest in the market and i want to be the first one uh, let let's say i mean i don't know how many of you have heard about uh, india stack which is uh, really the buzzword in the indian market segment today uh, who who can go first on on the india stack so th there are people there are uh, cxos who who are very tech savvy and and then who want to be the first in the market ahead of the competition and and then uh, be be the differentiator and third one uh, this is more around the overall it awareness this is not just at the management or at the exec level but uh, uh, indian business house uh, and the it part of the indian business house uh, in terms of their it awareness in terms of their it maturity it's usually low that that was probably a true statement uh, uh, probably few few years ago uh, but right now if if you look at all the development uh, and 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 then the uh, um, uh, awareness that that's happening in in this uh, indian it houses uh, the maturity level is slowly picking up again uh, we don't have to compare and it's not a fair comparison uh, to a us industry or a, a european it industry and then see uh, indian customers it awareness is very low and they don't understand uh, what it means to implement something and they don't appreciate the value of technology blah 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 so all those things are not true anymore and and these things will only get better in terms of okay uh, they appreciating the uh, value of okay the solutions you are delivering and and then the technology aspect of it so on so forth those things are going to get better only okay so with, with that uh, and and if you have few examples of other myths that you have Uh, come across or or you have seen uh, probably we can talk about it uh, in in terms of the customer segments uh, the way i see it uh, is there are three broader segments uh, one one is the captive centers uh, like your astrazenecas or the ibms or uh, i mean accenture yeah, they they have a proper uh, indian setup right now so i can't quote uh, accenture right now uh, but let, let's take like the, the ibms of the world they have their typical uh, india captive centers uh, the primary uh, focus on that uh, used to be right i mean right now things are changing the primary focus of that used to be how can i uh, get the regular mundane not so critical uh, work done out of india at a much cheaper cost compared to if i had to do the same thing uh, from from my uh, us location or a european location uh, if you had observed and, and if you are like uh, keeping a tab on what's happening on the captive market there are many companies uh, many of those western companies who are investing heavily on Uh, very high tech uh, and 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 then uh, research oriented uh, type of projects that's been done out of their local indian captive offices uh, so the old uh, norm of uh, let me send the mundane uh, low skill type of a job to india and then i'll keep the uh, core niche niche uh, type of work with me over here uh, in the onshore 
those days are gone. Uh, so the captive markets are the captive segment is really offering uh, greater uh, projects in, in terms of the technical challenge, in terms of the business problem that they are trying to solve, so on and so forth. So that that's like a bigger, broader segment still because in, in terms of the end customer, or sorry, in terms of the uh, senior management that you are dealing with, those people usually, uh, at least to begin with, they, they come from West, so they are fairly uh, used to the Indian IT industry and, and, and then uh, it, it's easy to adapt or it's easy to work with them uh, in, in the captive market segment. So that is the first part. And the second one uh, is, is and this is where uh, the local telcos like the Airtels of the world or the Reliances of the world uh, and few publishing uh, big big names are there. Uh, the retail uh, chains like your shopper stop uh, and things like that. So these these people are based out of India and uh, they are also uh, having a fairly established. Uh, IT uh, presence uh, in in their uh, the business divisions. So the, these may not spend as much as a captive for the obvious reasons. Uh, but like I said in the beginning, it, it's not that they don't have money. I mean, if you go approach them with the right problem statement, with the with the right business value, then uh, you can expect as much spending uh, from the India business houses as well. Uh, but the key is okay. What value I am giving for the money that I am getting? Uh, so this is another big segment uh, that that people focused on India market are targeting. And the third segment is a startup segment. Again, the question uh, here you might have: uh, startups usually hire in house and then they don't uh, go uh, work with the offshore partner. Uh, in most cases, it is true, but uh, there are few startups for various reasons. Uh, they look for uh, local partners, and uh, of course, it will be uh, more chaotic than an India business house or, or a captive center in terms of set processes, in terms of uh, uh, like the work culture, so on and so forth. Uh, but nevertheless, startup is another market uh, uh, you can focus on, and in few years, it's going to get better. On, on the third customer segment category uh, in the India market. Uh, the unique advantages that I see uh, in the Indian market, uh, if you look at most of these uh, companies uh, in any of these three segments, uh, the access that you get to a C-level executive, be it a CTO, be it a CX, uh, a CEO, are, are a president or a director kind of a profile, uh, it, it is fairly easier compared to uh, what it would mean in, in the Western. I'm, I'm not trying to do a comparison in each of these uh, cases uh, between a Western market and the Indian market, but this has an unique advantage. And, and in a couple of slides later, I'll talk about why it could be a disadvantage also. But having access to the C-level exec, at least in the Indian context, you will be able to relate to the broader vision, uh, why certain business problem is being taken as an IT initiative, what uh, advantage or, or what is the uh, end goal the CXO is trying to achieve by doing this. So there are obviously a lot of positives, a uh, lot of advantages than uh, the uh, disadvantages that you will get by having access to a C-level exec. Uh, the second obvious advantage, uh, again, depends on how you see. Uh, you don't get to go on site uh, anymore in, in the old fashioned and the usual way. Uh, if you have a quick uh, discussion that you want to have face to face, uh, if you are working uh, in the same uh, city uh, as your customer location, you, you just book a meeting slot and, and, and then go meet them. Uh, within like an hour's notice or a couple of hours notice. So which, which again works to your greater advantage in terms of reducing the entire cycle time uh, of having to wait in zone to wake up and, and then answer your queries and then get into those late night calls, early morning calls, all, all that is gone. Uh, 
uh, except that yeah, you don't get the perks that usually comes. I mean, if you have to travel on site and then be there, get that experience. Nevertheless, to me, working with a customer, whether you go or onshore or whether you work uh, uh, like three kilometers away, uh, it, it, it's the same experience uh, because you get to see the problem from the other side. And like I said, this this works greater uh, to your advantage. Sorry about that. Uh, so the third important aspect to me, uh, which many times get overlooked, is the cultural uh, aspect, right? Uh, when one working with an Indian customer, uh, you don't need to uh, spend some time to understand the cultural aspects, uh, cultural sensitivities, uh, and and then trying to adapt. Uh, I'm not saying that it, uh, that is right or wrong. All I'm saying is. Uh, you don't need to reinvent anything here. I mean, you you typically understand uh, the the cultural aspect, the cultural uh, sensitivities, and it's very easy to work through those things right from day one. And that I I see as a very big advantage in terms of working in the Indian market. Uh, so th th those are the three main broader things. I'm I'm not going into the details of it, this is more to give you an idea uh, in, in terms of the breadth of what it means to be in the Indian market. Uh, so if, if there are more questions, probably yeah, now or later I can take it. Uh, some of the disadvantages, uh, again, as of today, uh, if you go uh, try to sell Agile uh, to, a, to a CXO, uh, the, the typical reaction you will get is, uh, it is just another uh, development methodology or it's just another execution methodology. Uh, what is so special about it? What are the uh, advantages or uh, benefits that I'm going to get out of Agile versus a waterfall? Uh, this is typically due to, in my perspective, uh, they don't want to get into the nitty gritties or the details of how you execute, how you uh, come up with the delivery uh, because they just wanted to get the work done and that, that is for so many reasons. They want to get the work done uh, irrespective of okay, whether you follow Agile, whether you follow Waterfall or uh, some other methodology. As of today, uh, in, in my, my uh, view, uh, Agile is not the USP, uh, but at least uh, from my organization, we are, we are trying to explain it to the customers why Agile uh, is, is a very important factor in ensuring the successful outcome of any of those engagement that, that we are having. Uh, some customers do get it and, and it, in large most of the customers still feel indifferent to uh, the specific execution methodology, especially Agile. Uh, this, this one is really tough. Uh, uh, being a part a part time sales guy, uh, I I can feel the pain uh, of uh, being asked to do a fixed price, uh, and when I am uh, suggesting, okay, let's do it the agile way. Uh, as you guys will easily understand and relate to, uh, fixed price and agile uh, doesn't go uh, together at all, right? I mean, however hard you try. Uh, when you say a fixed price, then uh, there is no agility in that. Uh, but this is still an open problem, uh, and, and at least we haven't cracked it. Uh, this is this is the disadvantage I I, I see uh, as of today. Moving on, uh, some of the challenges uh, that I see I faced uh, while in an engagement with an Indian customer. Uh, I'll, I'll go through them one by one, and uh, if, if there are any uh, doubts or questions, uh, again, I'm, I'm repeating the same thing just to make sure uh, you are staying with me, and, and then uh, uh, it, it's not like uh, sounding alien to you. Just, just wanted to make sure that the time that you are spending and I'm spending is, is useful and effective for both of us. Uh, fair programming, I, I know not many uh, Indian Agile Houses IT organization mandating pair programming. At least where I come from, ThoughtWorks, uh, pair programming is, is one of the uh, core hygienic aspects. Uh, I'm not going to go into the whys and why nots of pair programming here, uh, but 
in the Indian context, uh, how hard I try, I can't sell uh, that for doing a single piece of work, I need two people to pair and then uh, do, do the work. And again, this is like over the last few years we have been trying and uh, we are not successful yet. And, and some of those questions are very genuine, very, very uh, rational. Uh, but that is partly because, like I said in the beginning, the IT organization, IT industry, uh, or, or the uh, CXO mindset has not been tuned or matured enough to understand the advantages that you will get by doing pair programming. So largely, you will have to go with uh, what I call as pragmatic pairing. Uh, probably uh, I can cover that when I'm talking about pragmatic pairing in a couple of slides later. Uh, but right now, pair programming is a big no uh, when, when you talk to a Indian IT uh, business guy. Sorry, Indian business guy. Uh, team composition. Uh, again, if, if you are in an uh, agile team uh, for a Western, uh, like let's say US or an European project, uh, you will typically go with a set of coders. Uh, there will be a business analyst. There will be a bunch of uh, testers, quality analysts, and you will have a scrum master. Uh, you will have like a project manager. Very various type of roles, and everybody together uh, form one team. And then you you go as a unit, and then you get something done, and and then move on. Right? Uh, Indian context, uh, it's it's very difficult. Uh, I'm not saying it's impossible, but it's very difficult to sell those supporting roles. Uh, I am paying for the code or, or the product that you are delivering me. Why do I need to pay for the additional roles? Uh, very, very simple example, right? When I explain it to my customer, I need to spend time to understand your business uh, at a very broader level so that whatever solution that we are discussing, whether that is relevant to the business at this point in time or not. Uh, the Typical response you will get is, why do I need to pay for uh, you trying to understand my business? This is for your interest and coming up with the right solution. So th th these are some of the questions that you will get from every uh, other uh, CXO guy. Uh, but again, you, you need to work through that. I mean, it's, it's not an easy process. I'm not going to go into the solutions of all of these. Uh, I'm just trying to make you uh, aware through this session what are some of the unique challenges uh, that you will face in the Indian market. So it, it's, it's very difficult to sell something uh, you would otherwise think as like a given or a default uh, when you are working with a uh, onshore type of a project, right? Moving on, uh, again, specialized skills or roles. For example, uh, let's say a product uh, manager or a product owner type of a profile. Uh, or let's say experienced designer. Uh, something like that, it, it's not very easy to sell. Uh, irrespective of trying to again explain the value of why a visual designer or an interaction designer is very critical. Uh, they'll say you, you get an UI guy uh, who can quickly put together some wireframes and then get it done. And th this happens irrespective of uh, the tech savviness of the uh, business person, uh, the maturity level of the organization. Because at some point they would see uh, where can I optimize cost, where can I control cost. By spending a uh, specific amount on such specialized skills, they see it as, okay, I'm not getting the right return on investment and value for money. That, that's a challenge as, as it exists today. But there are few customers uh, who are able to see the advantage of bringing these uh, perfectionists and, and then they are willing to pay for it. Yeah, the point I said about uh, an advantage of having uh, access to the C-level exec, uh, this could be disadvantageous because sometimes they could be uh, true, uh, I mean they could come as an intrusion and, and then challenge you on every step of the way or trying to impose their authority. No, I'm paying you do it this way, or I'm uh, uh, the exec sponsor here, and and you need to listen. So some of those hard, 
pushes or, or uh, tough negotiations that you need to go through just because C-level exec guy is uh, involved at a very closer uh, level. Uh, you need to build a relationship, you need to build that trust and then uh, be able to tell him, okay, stay away uh, when you are not required and, and then I'll come to you for the right inputs, right feedback when uh, I see the need for getting it from you. So that, that comes through a trust relationship and then it takes time. Uh, rigid hierarchical structures, uh, th this, this could be true uh, in any, any type of organization, uh, uh, doesn't matter whether it's an Indian organization or, or a non-Indian organization, uh, but here what, at least what I have seen, uh, if you have a very strict hierarchical structure, uh, the decisions always have to come from the boss, uh, even though uh, a mid-level manager or, or let's say a product owner type of a guy, uh, who, who has to take the call in a specific scenario, uh, but just because he doesn't have the authority to take the decision, uh, sometimes the decision making loop will, will be a slightly longer circle and that could unnecessarily delay uh, the progress uh, of, of the project that, that you have. Again, this is this is from the experience uh, what what I have seen uh, so far. Uh, having the product mindset, uh, except very few product companies. If you are working with a product company, fine. But if you are working with a uh, services type of a company, uh, finding the right product guy and and somebody who can do the product thinking, it, it is still uh, in the very early stages. What this means, uh, you won't be able to have that vision, uh, this is what I need to produce, let's say at the end of six months or at the end of one year. So you will be in the name of Agile, iterating uh, so much uh, in, into the product uh, and, and which would cause unnecessary rework because the person who is giving you requirements is not able to think of a complete product and you are not uh, having enough domain experts in, in that particular domain to come up with a right product idea, right product uh, suggestion. Uh, so this is one area where uh, uh, people also can pick up uh, uh, from the vendor side and, and then trying to help the customer in, in the initial stages and, and this could work to the vendor's advantage is, is how I see it. Okay, few more challenges. Uh, so this is more uh, from the execution uh, aspect. Uh, for example, the showcases uh, are, are the show and tells uh, that we typically do uh, at the end of each iteration uh, are the acceptance criteria you come up with for uh, any of your features or stories. Uh, even though you call it out n number of times, uh, what if, if you sign off on this particular uh, working version of the product or a particular acceptance criteria, uh, any further changes on this piece of requirement has to be taken as a change request. Uh, that is, is very difficult to get through in the Indian context again. Uh, they are not seeing this as a sacrosanct uh, uh, when it comes to okay, end of showcase, this is an accepted version of the delivery or th this feature has so and so acceptance criteria and we have met all these acceptance criteria and then let's move on. Uh, if they find another variant or a uh, slight change that they want to incorporate, uh, they'll, they'll argue with you and, and they'll, they'll debate with you forever to prove you wrong or at one point you will accept, okay, I'll just do it for free for you. Uh, so this is, is a ground level challenge that you will see if you are uh, managing a project in the Indian context. Uh, irrespective of you explaining uh, we are agile, uh, less or no documentation, blah, 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 uh, they would still expect some sort of a documentation and in many cases very detailed documentation because they are used to it. And like I said, this will uh, only mature from where it is today. 
but as it stands today, uh, customers do expect detailed documentation just just for uh, let's say their own safety, right? In case if uh, the relationship ends today, tomorrow they would be able to uh, either get an in-house IT, uh, IT team or give it to somebody else, and they feel having this detailed documentation is is a good thing or a secure thing to have. Uh, again, this this could be part of our culture. Uh, what do I? Get? I mean, they, they they won't ask it in the direct way, right? I mean, what do I get for free? Uh, by the way, uh, you should take care of coaching my team uh, and and training them on the engineering aspect, training them on the uh, agile practices, so on and so forth. And and don't expect me to pay you for that because that comes as part of the package uh, that we sign. This is just a couple of examples. There could be many more, uh, uh, which people expect as a what do I get in addition, extra or a free add-on kind of a thingy. Uh, like I said, this this could be just just in our blood. Okay, we we would need something more for the money that that we are paying. Uh, I don't know. If this is generic, uh, but at least uh, what I had seen, uh, sales cycle takes longer. This could be because. Uh, uh, the customers typically want to make sure they are making the right decision and, and then this is the right investment they are making. Uh, again, the, no, no matter uh, whether it's a startup or whether it's like a, a, a Ambani Adani type of a profile or uh, it, it's somebody uh, uh, who has set up a shop here for a longer time. Uh, sales cycle usually takes longer time. Uh, because the, the the feedback loop, the number amount of questions, and and then changes that uh, customers expect uh, in a contract, uh, this is typically longer than what it would take uh, otherwise. Uh, so that that's one challenge uh, that you will face if you are uh, dealing with customers in, in closing a contract or or doing a sales cycle. Okay, enough of challenges. Uh, what works for the Indian market? Uh, th this is something uh, which will uh, works to the advantage of both the parties, uh, uh, yourself as a vendor and then the customer also. Uh, what it means is that uh, right from day one you are establishing a, a very close trusted relationship uh, with your customer team. Uh, it, it, I mean you can see it in, in a way it's, it's pairing uh, but uh, very soon uh, you, you will have to split the pairs if you are working with uh, developers from client side or, or the analyst and analyst pairing. Uh, but nevertheless, the, the, the larger point I'm trying to make here is uh, rather than having your own vendor dedicated team versus a uh, customer specific team, uh, if they have an IT in-house presence or they want to build IT, uh, going for a co-sourced uh, type of a delivery model will, will be beneficial in the longer run. Uh, Again, this is again very specific, uh, not easy to sell, uh, but if you are explaining the value and then pushing for CICD, uh, the benefit that customer can see for themselves in the longer run will be phenomenal and, and then they would only thank you for that. But initially, yeah, they, they need to uh, be explained ready uh, to uh, make that investment in terms of uh, setting up the CI/CD infrastructure. I mean, uh, I mean, if they have their own data center, fine. But uh, if you need to set it up in the cloud and and then uh, setting up the overall framework for your continuous integration, continuous delivery, uh, that initial period they are not going to get uh, any business value directly delivered. Uh, but yeah, the, this needs some hard selling. Uh, but once you do that. Once you start showing benefit, it, it, it's really going to be a beneficial thing in the long run. Uh, like I mentioned, uh, going for pragmatic program pairing, uh, I, I think you guys might be familiar with that, but I'll, I'll just explain it in like 30 seconds. Uh, if, if there is a very complex feature uh, where uh, only uh, at very detailed context, uh, in order to break the silo, it's better to pair another person uh, with this per, uh, guy so that that uh, knowledge gets spread across the team. That's 
one of the main reasons why we do pairing and then the second uh, it, it takes care of your team leverage mix also uh, you can put a junior developer with the very senior guy in the team and the next time the junior can take care of the uh, final aspects of finishing up the story and then the senior guy can move on to another story few advantages why we do pairing in addition to not having a separate uh, unit testing phase uh, but what you can do is do pragmatic pairing uh, some of the very crucial critical features uh, you can pair um, and this could be between uh, two vendor empl employees or if in the co source model with the customer uh, IT uh, developer and things which are very simple uh, can be quickly done you you just do it uh, with, with a single developer so you choose between where I need to pair versus where I can uh, do it with, with just one developer and most customers will agree to this so that there shouldn't be any problem yeah. this, this is very crucial in, in my view uh, like I said uh, unless you see something uh, unless uh, you see that over and over again in a uh, period of time, uh, it, it's a little difficult for them to get into the trust mode uh, that these guys can deliver and these guys can deliver value. Uh, so doing very quicker, smaller working prototypes, I mean these prototypes can be converted into actual code. I'm not saying uh, create throwaway prototypes, uh, create working prototypes. Uh, uh, not too many edge cases, not too many uh, negative scenarios that you need to cover. Okay, will this work in a happy path scenario? Are you okay with the journey? Are you okay with the look and feel? Uh, are you okay with the data validation? So on and so forth. Then go into the details of building this feature completely. Uh, like I said, iterate as many times as necessary, but, but this proves to be very effective. And you can do it uh, because you have the advantage of proximity to the customer. You can just go sit with them or ask them why don't you come over and, and then uh, look at what I'm trying to build and, and show it to you and then give me your feedback. So those, those are the advantages that you need to uh, make the most use of. Again, this could be true in uh, any market but more, more specifically uh, since we are talking about the India market. Uh, making those short term investment in terms of those special roles that I mentioned earlier uh, are something else I mean it doesn't need to be just special roles but that is just an example uh, if, you, if you can show it to them uh, in, in, in its true sense that you are game for it you are putting your skin in the game uh, then it will go a real long way in terms of making it a, a successful project uh, and this could be okay what what am I getting in addition what am I getting for free uh, this could be from that aspect also but ready to make those short term investments uh, uh, short term investments uh, if you want to stay longer in the game and this is again uh, one of the very uh, important points uh, start slow uh, meaning if you know there is a very bigger problem uh, to solve, uh, don't get over excited and, and then okay I'll, I'll just throw as many people as I can knowing that customer will, will be able to pay you for as many people. Uh, always start slow, uh, do the quick prototyping aspect and, and then don't upsell everything. I mean I have XD, I have uh, data, I have uh, CICD. You don't need to sell everything all at once. Uh, figure out okay what makes more sense to begin with. Uh, is there a need for let's say doing a data machine learning sort of a thing at a later point? Then pitch it with the right business proposal. What benefit you will get? What return on investment you get? Then grow the uh, engagement, grow the business slowly so that you are doing it uh, for the benefit of customer, and then customer doesn't feel the pinch that these guys are trying to make money from me rather they are trying to help me to solve my business problem. Uh, so once once you get into that trusted relationship uh, like I said in the previous point uh, you are game for like a long term and that's what would typically work in, in this market. Yes, uh, you, you need to show the value for money in, in tangible terms not 
like very uh, superficial uh, uh, which can't directly or which the customer can't directly relate to uh, am i going to sell few more units am i going to get few more hits into my website whatever be the domain that uh, your customer is operating right uh, how are you going to give a tangible benefit it may not be quantitative all the time uh, but as long as you are able to clearly articulate this is the value that you will get by spending uh, extra bucks or uh, investing in, in this one uh, that is very very crucial uh, even you can argue uh, it's it's not unique to indian customers but this will be uh, more standing out or it will be on your face every time you have a similar conversation so be sensitive to that and, and then uh, try to always have an objective tangible uh, outcome why you are suggesting something uh, this is again for the people who are uh, working on contracts and and then the sales cycle uh, you need to be innovative and, and non conventional i am not going to go into the details of it uh, but you need to be uh, uh, having various pricing commercial model options you can always stick to time and material cap time and material and uh, uh, the the proven easy uh, to explain conventional models you need to think out of the box how are you putting your skin in the game uh, it, it could be as simple as the reinvestment that i spoke about a uh, few bullet points earlier but be ready to uh, innovate and then come up with something which customer can appreciate and then uh, give you business yeah that's all i have uh, for today uh, open to questions yeah shridharan we have many questions and uh, i'm assigning questions one by one and uh, question from manas he is asking that please define one more time pragmatic pairing mm -hmm. so uh, like i said let, let me try to give you an example right uh, let's say you want to build a login page right a very simple example uh, you know you at the most you will have couple of fields or three fields if you have a captcha and you need to make couple of server calls and you will have to do couple of validations and nothing fancy about this one right do i need two developers four eyes to look into that and trying to come up with uh, various edge cases scenarios no so in this case you can just say i am going to work on this as a unique single individual uh, something like i i need to come up with uh, what is going to be the right price model or, or a pricing algorithm uh, for my uh, one of the sales channels or let's take the flip cards right uh what what would be the uh, most attractive price that i can quote at this season at this time of the year and so on so forth there you you obviously need more minds and and uh, brains to think together and then see what would really work you need some sort of a business uh thinking also their pairing makes more sense uh, so that you guys can discuss ideas and then whatever solution that you are implementing uh, that is more comprehensive compared to uh, like a simple login page i, th I think that makes it clear yes you can take another question i have assigned yep who are the c level execs right so uh, like the cto uh, ceos uh, Uh, let's say if you are working with the marketing team the uh, chief marketing officers uh, some companies have presidents some companies have uh, mds so th th these are the decision makers usually sitting at the top uh, just to give you another example uh, uh, see, like would i have access to tim cook or would i have access to bill gates as easy as uh, i get access to some of the uh, c level execs in the indian market that that's where the comparison is yeah so there is one more question banu prasad uh, i'm just reading 
one of my observation in the large companies which were working on outsourcing model with clients, client moving out of the outsourcing started a small agile team on site. Do you agree if you do think it will result in reduction of so many roles? Um, it, I mean, just to answer this question, yes, uh, but what I am seeing is more and more of these captives are doing uh, insourcing. Uh, like they, they want to move away from this uh, uh, vendor uh, partnerships and how do I build my own IT team doing all these critical pieces of work. Uh, so initially they would engage with you and these are more like a short term coaching, training, uh, mentoring skills and at some point where they feel they are self uh, reliant, uh, then yeah. I mean I, I don't look at that as a long term play but I don't see that as a threat also because you obviously have the other segments that I spoke about so you, you will always focus on the other market, uh, other, other segment rather. Are there any more questions? Okay, how do you see cultural issues for India market? Uh, like I said, again, th this is a bigger myth uh, that your Indian customers uh, are very hard to work with. I, I disagree strongly. Uh, end of the day, it, it is uh, human nature and aspect, right? I mean, every, every customer and you and me as a customer uh, would demand uh, what best I can get for the money that I'm spending, what additional stuff that I can get for the money. Indian customers probably uh, sometime appear to be straight on your face, but that is good. So you get the direct feedback and, and then uh, you can work on it and then you can explain your stand even better. So I don't uh, see that as a cultural issue working with the uh, Indian market. So one more from my extra projects are fixed price, but customer with comes up with a lot of it. Yeah, I think that that's a practical issue. Uh, this one was from Ankush. Uh, this is a practical issue and, and that's why I'm strongly against doing a fixed price, uh, uh, especially when I'm selling only Ajay. Uh, so fixed price on Ajay doesn't go well. And, and in other words, customer doesn't understand the value of what it means to develop a software. Uh, many a times, uh, doing a time and material or any other mode of contract will work to his advantage rather than doing a fixed price where he can have a confident number and okay I'm spending so much this year and that is not going to go up. But end of the day if my product is not uh, solving the purpose that I originally intended to there is no meaning. So uh, I, I, I'm with you on this point but yeah don't, don't go for it if you can. Question from Ankush. We stand on how many India projects are profitable. <laughs> I can I can speak for myself. Uh, yeah, we are profitable, and, and uh, uh, part of that is because I don't generally do fixed price contracts. But even if you do fixed price contract, as long as you control the inflow of those enhancements that you mentioned in your previous question, and then you can negotiate uh, on reasonable uh, degree. Uh, you can be profitable, but but in general, whatever I am aware of, uh, mo most of the projects are profitable. Again, I don't have the exact statistics, uh, but but this is this is more from uh, what I hear and 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 then uh, discuss. Which framework is more used in agile uh, in India market? It it's it's more on the Scrum side, uh, even though. I'm not a big fan or I rather discourage people using Scrum. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I have uh, reasons to back that up. But it, it's typically the uh, broader Agile uh, framework, right? Uh, for example, uh, you need to have your, not the product backlog, but you need to have your, let's say, start with the most viable product and then you build your master story list. Uh, uh, you break that down into uh, features and, and then come up with the release planning, come up with the iteration planning. I don't put it under any framework, but these are some of the basics of uh, how do you execute or how do you go about doing an agile project. Uh, pairing or, or the um, pair programming is one concept which, which I explained earlier. If you do it well and good, which is falling under the XP, XP uh, extreme programming bucket, but otherwise go for TDD. Uh, do your regular retrospectives, uh, do your regular showcases, 
the, the typical uh, or the hygienic aspects of doing an agile. So I don't want to put it as a uh, framework, so to say. Okay, I couldn't understand co-sourced approach. Uh, so this one is from Varun. What I mean by co-sourced is uh, nothing but uh, delivery ownership is not just with you as a vendor. Uh, it is a shared delivery responsibility by having uh, developers and then analysts and testers from customer side. Both of you are trying to deliver uh, value for customer. Uh, so it, it is a shared risk, uh, shared uh, ownership model and, and then both the uh, gain and, and then uh, risk are equally shared between both the parties, both the client and vendor. I think yeah, we have gone through the questions that I see in this list. Yes, Sridharan, and uh, we have reached the time box and I would like to thank uh, to all for the great participation. Thanks Sridharan for the nice presentation and uh, we have to end the webinar and thanks again for the great participation. Thanks, thanks Alaksi. Yeah. And, and thanks guys, hope it was useful. Take it. Bye. Bye.